Good afternoon. Happy 12 o'clock lunchtime, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We're happy to have you here. We appreciate you joining us this uh, afternoon to uh, another great session of uh, virtual learning experiences for students here in Palm Beach County. Uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us in the chat box and everyone else uh, in, in watching this on the replay. We do appreciate you uh, here with us and watching us. Um, as always, there's a chat box over there on the right-hand side. Please make sure that you are typing appropriate things. Keep it school-friendly. Um, there are moderators in the chat who have a little wrench next to their name who are able to moderate the chat box. We also have an automated bot that uh, does remove comments if there are too many uh, capital letters, too many symbols, too many emojis. So keep those to a minimum as well. We are asking that you ask questions in the chat box. We're going to hear a short story um, that Peter has written. And then after the story, we'll be taking questions. So uh, please feel free to think of some questions throughout the book. Um, and you'll be able to answer that. You'll be able to get some of your questions answered. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, John Long, who is also part of the educational technology team. He's going to introduce our our guests and uh, and take it away. So thanks a lot, John. Take it away. We are so glad to have you here today, and we're really excited to have with us Peter and Paul Reynolds, uh, twin brothers. Uh, Peter is going to be reading his North Star book, and uh, I'm really excited about this reading because it's a really good book for this time of year. Kind of thinking about what our course may be and our, how our constellations help us out. And we'll, we'll kind of explain that as we go along. And so actually I'm gonna turn it over to Peter and Paul and uh, let them start with a story. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you, John and John. Yes. And uh, hello everybody. <laughs> um, we are here in the Boston area in our studios called Fable Vision and we are surrounded by books and technology uh, but you know books uh, we love technology but and that's how we are connecting the dots today but uh, we love the story story is a great technology and one of the best places to store a story is in a book but um, I think John the John and John are going to help us by putting the art from the book up on the screen right yes so, correct there we go so this is a story I wrote, um, I don't know how long ago. It was actually one of Peter's first books yes. uh, that he mm -hmm. So he some wrote. of you might know, I wrote a book called The Dot. The Dot and Ish and Sky Color and the Word Collector. And Paul and I wrote a book called Going Places. Places. And, uh, but this story is a story about a boy on his North Star journey. So I'm gonna dive right in. <clears throat> All right, the North Star by me. <laughs> A sweet breeze met the boy as he awoke to his journey. He traveled on all fours for quite some time and, and he grew and he paused. One day he had the urge to stand, to walk. It made his journey easier. He could run too, but for the most part, he walked and he wasn't afraid of much. There he is taking some time to stop and smell the flowers. He wandered the fields exploring, sometimes stopping, sometimes happily going in the circles, sometimes dancing. And one of my favorite things to do, sometimes napping. Always have to take a little rest on the journey. One day, the boy saw an oak leaf drift and land on the water. He wondered how the leaf managed to float, the way the stars seemed to float in the night sky. A spray of sand interrupted his thoughts. Where are you going in such a hurry? Asked the boy. The rabbit shot out of sight, disappearing onto a path the boy had never, never noticed before. The boy left the floating leaf and he wandered toward the path and there he saw a cat. The cat purred gently. 
where did the rabbit go in such a hurry? Oh, oh, oh where did the rabbit go in such a hurry? I thought that was the cat. <laughs> Um, this is how we, we've decided, I'm going to do the character voices and Peter will read yes. the narratives. So where did the rabbit go in such a hurry, the boy asked the cat. Mm -hmm. He was in a rush to start his journey. It's time for you to start your journey too. Oh, but I have been on a journey, the boy cried. I've seen many wonderful things, some I understand and, and some I don't. Like, like how that leaf managed to, uh, to float <clears throat> on the water. Hmm. Well, that's fascinating, but I'd hate for you to be late. You don't want to be left behind. Behind? Who's ahead of me? You wouldn't believe how many. You know, you're not alone. You're not the only one on this journey. Plenty ahead of you and lots to follow. The boy began walking down the path. He stretched out far ahead of him. Signs kept pointing him along the way. Some parts of the journey were easy, and some were very difficult. And there he is, kind of getting across that rickety bridge. Although he was following the well-worn path, he had a growing feeling that he was lost. Check out that sign. Which way would you go if you saw a sign that said this way? The forest seemed to be growing thicker. The soil was wet and muddy, making every step a struggle. Clouds had rolled in overhead and the darkness closed around him. And there he is with, in the middle of this dark forest. Where is he going? Where is he going? We're gonna take a little break and we're gonna come back to the story. We're gonna find out where this boy ended up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, go ahead, John. Go ahead, uh, Peter, if you need to finish your statement. Oh, I was just going to say that, um, you know, as, as I'm reading this story, this is a, the story is a metaphor. So um, maybe you're, you, you can think about how this story relates to your journey, right? Some parts of the journey, right, school, some, some, some parts of school are really easy, and then some parts can be really difficult. And so I wrote this book to help inspire you, right, my readers, to think about your journey and how uh, how you can enjoy the easy parts, right? And also savor the journey and enjoy it, uh, but also how to deal with the difficult parts too. And then the big question is, um, where are you going, right? Where is this journey going to take you? Where will I find you? Uh, where will Paul and I find you in say 10 years or 15 years? I hope it's a really awesome place. And that ultimately that's our wish for you is to have an amazing journey and uh, make one, make a dream or two come true. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to some of the questions. We have some free uh, questions uh, videotaped for you to answer and stuff like that. So the first one's not a videotape, but it's an interesting question. And so I'm just gonna flip over to my questions here. We'll take two or three and then we'll jump back to the story. So um, if someone wanted to be an author, what would inspire your book? And you kind of answered that a little bit, but can you elaborate a little bit more on maybe what inspired you to write this book or the dot? Hmm. Wow, really good question. So thank you, uh, Faith um, from South Olive Elementary School. Um, I think one of the reasons, the thing that inspires me to write books is, you know, how can I help people, right? How can there are lots of ways to help people, right? You can teach, you could clean up, uh, you know, trash in your neighborhood. Um, I wanted to create stories that would help people um, to do some deep thinking. And maybe if you read one of my books or our books, um, maybe you'll feel a little bit braver, you'll feel more creative. So I, I think, how can my book be helpful? What could I write that would help somebody else? Mm -hmm. And for me, anyway, that's a really, that's, that's inspiration. Um, Paul, do you right. know? Well, there was a second part to that question as well, mm -hmm. right? Which is, what would you say to anybody who wants to be an author? Oh, yeah. And, and I would say, um, just do it. Right. Um, Pick up your marker and start writing, right? Or type away on your computer. And, you know, Peter was, Peter was publishing books before I was publishing books. And I knew how fun it was. And I could see how fun he was, how much fun he was having. And then one day he said, well, why didn't you write a book. So we, we wrote Going Places together and some other books mm -hmm. that you might know, like the Sydney and Simon series, 
It's all about STEM and STEAM. And um, so you really have to just decide, I'm going to do it. And as you say, just pick up a pencil, right. jump on your computer, and just start writing, and then start sharing your, your ideas right. and your writing. And you can it, you don't have to do everything yourself, right? You can find uh, a writing partner or an art partner, or maybe you could do a little bit of both, right? Maybe you could do some sketching and someone watercolors or add, uh, adds color digitally. Um, so it's, it's actually a big team that puts a book together because you have an editor and uh, a designer. So, but the, the most important thing is keep thinking, right? But take those thoughts and, and record them in some way, whether it's video right. or writing or drawing right. or animation. Right, we love animation. Okay, here's another question for you. Are you ready? We are ready, John. All right. So this is the Thank next question. For that question. <laughs> uh, this is Kaylee from Westwood Elementary School. I'm in first grade and I go to Westwood Elementary. What surprise do you most in the book? You may have to repeat that for them, John. Go ahead. <laughs> that was awesome, Kaylee. So I think she wants to know what surprised you most about the book. Oh, what surprised? Um, you know, I think it's the, the the fact that so many people loved the book, right? And that so many teachers found the book and they said, wow, you know, this is a really, really cool story. And I think this could help my students think about their journey. And one particular teacher, uh, Sue Pandiani, she was a teacher on Cape Cod. She found the book and she loved it so much. She wrote to me every single day with a new idea on how to use the North Star theme in her classroom. And she, she actually changed the name of her students. They weren't students anymore. They were called the North Star Navigators. And they were all on a journey and they were kind of imagining that they each had a boat and they were designing their boats and they were designing their flags and they had reading lanterns that they brought home. And I think that's what surprised me is that I had this, I wrote the story, but it's what amazing teachers and kids do, right? Inspired by the book. We call it activating the book. And I, I think for, for me, it was surprising to see, like Peter was saying, how grown-ups read the book and were really, really uh, changed by the book because <clears throat> sometimes if you're not thinking about your journey, Sometimes when you grow up, you forget your dreams and you're doing a job maybe that you don't really love. And you have to be reminded to follow your North Star and think about the journey that you're on. So it's that's been a that was a surprise to see how many grown-ups yeah. love this book too. Yeah, picture books are loved by right by young people and, and older people too. Everyone can love a picture book. Okay, one more question, and then we'll get back to the book. This is from Giovanni from Omni Middle School, and he had lots of questions for you, but uh, we picked this one just to kind of get to set the mood. Question. You're, the story of the North Star talks about a boy starting his journey, taking a path or choosing a path. Uh, does this, is this based off of a personal experience in life? That was all my questions for today. I hope you have a nice day and respond to these questions. Bye. So was that uh, was the story based on a real life experience or was it just, um, what was your inspiration for the story? Yeah, I, you know what, it was based on, I, it was my personal experience because in school, um, well, Paul, Paul's the good twin, right? He was very, very good. He could pay attention in school. He was well behaved. He was yeah. very well behaved. Yes, I should say that. He, he was well. He was able to focus and listen to his teachers. And I was a bit of a daydreamer, and I was drawing a lot, and I would kind of get into trouble because I was drawing. And um, what I didn't realize was that my drawing was that was one of my north, one of the stars in my constellation, sort of appearing in in the sky, right? And it, so I love to draw. And what I had to do was uh, figure out how to channel my creativity. And I had a math teacher in seventh grade who helped me channel that creativity. And he connected uh, my art star and my storytelling star to math and teaching. He's, he said to me, do you think you could teach math using your art and your storytelling? And I ended up uh, writing a comic book to teach math 
And he said, hey, that's a storyboard. Do you know it's called a storyboard? That is the plan, how to plan out an animated film. How would you like to make an animated film? So in seventh grade, I made my very first animated film. And I learned so much from my mentors, from that teacher who went off script. And he helped me create that film, but he introduced me to my mentor, our mentor, uh, Jim and Jean Morrow. And they were great media mentors for us. So you can learn a lot in school. And school is there to say, hey, check out this. This is chemistry and this is history. And, but the most important thing is to say, what if all that really, really interests you? And you know what? Maybe we didn't mention what you really, really love. Maybe you love motorcycles, right? They, I, they don't teach motorcycles too often in, in school, but maybe they should. And if they don't, you can, you can read about motorcycles. When was the first motorcycle ever uh, built? Um, uh, how many motorcycles are there on the planet? Is there, an, uh, is there a solar powered uh, motorcycle? There's so many questions. So when you find out what you love, you can dive in deeply. And so I wanted, I knew that that worked for me and I wanted to uh, write a book to inspire that kind of thinking, North Star thinking, I like to say. Okay. Question, Giovanni. So you want to go back to the story and we'll talk with some more questions. Uh, well, I would say, why don't we, why don't we pick up some story? And yeah. I think we're going to pick up on that. Let's see, we're going to join. Remember the boy was in the forest and he was, it got dark and a little bit spooky, right? Um, and he didn't quite know where he was going and he started to panic a bit. So the boy ran and ran and ran. And as he ran, he noticed the forest getting darker and thicker. The muddy ground became covered with water. He could no longer see the path. He sloshed through the swamp until he came to a clearing in the forest and there he saw a bird. You look lost, the bird said. I don't think so, I mean, I'm not sure if I'm lost, the boy replied. I, I hadn't really thought about it. Hadn't thought about it, said the bird. You must have some idea where you're going. Well, I've been following the path and Seems like many other people have taken it before me. There have been many signs along the way, and a very helpful cat guided me back to the path when I started to wander. The crickets fell silent as the bird asked, But where do you want to be going? I'm not sure, said the boy as he looked around the dark, tangled swamp, but I do know that this isn't where I want to be. I guess I am lost. The bird said, ask yourself where it is you want to go and then follow the signs you already know. What signs? Where are they? The bird flew off into the cloudy night sky. The boy looked up into the sky, something he had not done in a very, very long time. He tried desperately to see where the bird had gone. But as he did, the cloud seemed to melt, and there above him was a star, a very bright star. The boy stared at the star, and he felt a pang in his heart, a tingling in his spine. He could, a whisper in his ear, he could hear the star. The voice sounded so familiar. The boy began to walk toward the star. As he did, he noticed many other stars stretched out above him like a great big map. They had been there all along waiting for him. He stopped and rested a moment, savoring his guiding stars. What are you staring at? Croaked a voice behind him. What is up there? What's so interesting? The boy waited closer and answered, Stars, I'm, I'm looking at the stars. What stars? Asked the frog. I see a dark sky and mist and low green clouds. You don't see them? The boy asked. They're helping me. Uh, they're helping guide me out of the swamp. Would you like to come with me? Oh, no, thank you. The frogs. The frog oh, the frog smiled. smiled. I'm quite at home here in the bog. I swam here as a tadpole and grew up here. And here I will stay. The boy realized at that moment that, that everybody has a different journey, different signs and different stars. 
their own constellations. The boy left the frog, who croaked a farewell. Good luck on your journey. As he ventured beyond the swampy forest, the boy heard a cry. It was the rabbit who had been in such a hurry earlier, looking rather tired and hungry. He was stranded on a limb in the middle of the rushing river. The boy waded out, but realized that the river was too deep. The rabbit was trapped. He saw, then he saw an oak leaf drift by. It gave him an idea. The boy fashioned a boat out of swamp grass and twigs and rescued the rabbit. The boy smiled, having helped make the rabbit's journey easier. The boy looked up and he noticed that the star had become even brighter. He followed the star and as he did, the muddy ground grew drier and then grassy and then soft and sandy. Finally, he came to rest atop a dune. There below him was the beach and a boat. The boy looked out toward the horizon. The star glowed steadily, reminding him that he still had a long journey ahead. But it was his own journey, his very own wonderful journey. The beginning. And that is the North Star. That's awesome, Paul and Peter. That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, we want to take some questions from the chat, if we could, and then we'll come back to the constellation map in just a second. Uh, I saw some really good questions popping up in the chat just a few minutes ago. One of them was, uh, what is it like to be an author growing up? Did you realize you were going to be an author when you were in seventh grade and then that math, or is that something down the line that you came up with? Well, I think po both Paul and I loved, uh, we loved writing and drawing really as soon as we could pick up a pencil. Um, and he, maybe even before that, because we also loved puppets when we were growing up. We, our, my, our mo mother would take us to this store called Ethio Schwartz. Which in Boston. Was in Boston. And, and every birthday we could pick out anything we wanted, but we would always pick out a puppet, a marionette. Uh, they were from England. They were called Pelham Puppets. And we would bring these marionettes home and, you know, you move them around and there's a little string to make the mouth move. But guess what? Right. Nothing came out. So who who would have to generate the, the story? Well, that was us. Right. So I think that was good. Uh, kind of a good sign that we we were we we thought that was fun to, uh, you know, create these stories for characters. Mm -hmm. And we just started writing and writing. We made a newspaper in second, second, grade. second grade. We, grade. We made our own newspaper. I would, we would write articles together and Peter would illustrate it. My dad would take it to his, his office and he would make copies on his copying machine. And it was so exciting because we were creating mm -hmm. and then we were publishing and sharing out our ideas with people. So pretty, pretty early on. So, you know, it's lots and lots of fun being an author and start right now. I, I bet you we have a lot of authors. It'd be interesting to just hear if there's anybody right. um, in the audience who yeah. is already writing. In fact, while, while we're talking on and on here, I would love it if you if you have been doodling or taking notes, that's great. Um, but feel free to pick up some uh, a pencil or any kind of marker um, or your tablet and uh, uh, doodle as we talk, right? Because when you hear words, right, you get these images in your head and ideas spark and you don't want to forget those awesome ideas. Yeah, you want to jot them down. But here's a good yeah. question. Uh, when you did, when did you first find interest in writing and when did you feel like that was the profession you wanted to be? Um, yeah, thanks, Brianna. That's a good question. I think and Brianna has an awesome last name too. Is she really, is Brianna related to you? Oh, Peter, Peter Kin. That's good. I like Are that. Are you kin of Peter? I, maybe hey, hey, Brianna, you know what? we're part of our family. We're all part of the human family, right? So we're all kind of related. So, um, yeah, well, I think, that, yeah, we were sharing that we liked writing, right? Um, uh, early on, mm -hmm. um, and then I think I really think it was my math teacher, who, you know, in seventh grade when I was twelve years old, when he said, "Hey, Peter, do you think you could teach math with the story?" I'm like, "Wow, what a cool challenge with mm -hmm. a story!" Hmm. And so I started drawing, and then I, when I finished, when he said, "Let's make the animated film," I'm like, "Wow, animation! I love animation. I, 
I think I'd like to be an animator. Mm -hmm. And I actually took a course in college and I studied it and I read books about it. And of course, well, today we have a company called Fable Vision. And if you check out fablevision.com, you can actually see our animation studio. It's also an interactive studio too, but we do lots of animation. So um, I kind of, I was lucky because I got to, I noticed what I love to do and I had a good, good uh, caring adults around me who mentored me. So find your mentor, find whatever it is that you guys love to do, find someone who's already doing it. And you, I think you'll be surprised. There are so many nice people out there that want to help you succeed. So if you want to get into medicine or law or writing or teaching, um, connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And yeah, having a teacher who believes in you and, and notices your spark is really awesome. Mm. I, I actually, um, I was take, it was because I wasn't doing well in a chemistry class that I ended up doing media production because I, I was, uh, this chemistry class was just really, really hard for me. And my guidance counselor, my teacher said, would you like to use this time to create videos mm -hmm. um, in the TV studio? And that's what I started doing. I did a lot of other things. And I actually did chemistry again, and I had a lot more fun the second time. But so just, it was because teachers were noticing what I love to do and helped me navigate my journey um, around, as Peter said, some parts of the journey are easy and some are difficult. Um, just because they're difficult doesn't mean you're gonna stop there. Right? You'll, you'll figure out a way to do it. So great correct questions, Brianna. Okay, so we're going to do some more video questions, and then we're going to go back to the chat a little bit, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the Constellation Mapper. And um, this is a question from... Hi, it's Camilla. I'm a fifth grader in Ms. Dunlap's class at South Olive Elementary in West Palm Beach, Florida. I have a question for you. What inspired you to make the book The North Star? All right, a great question from Camilla. Sounds like, right? What, yeah. what gave us the inspiration to, yeah. to write the story? Mm -hmm. I think you actually, you wish, I remember the story. You were, you were working with some teachers, right? And talking about ways to, to help students on the journey. Yeah, well, I do, uh, yeah. I remember, and I think you were drawing something. I was drawing something. <laughs> um, and I don't know if that's, yeah, part of that. Yeah. Well, I, I, we were talking about what, what do you need to learn in school? It was a group of friends of mine who, who did some deep thinking about what, um, what could you take out? Like, what's the most important thing in school? And they were listing all of these things. And I, ultimately, I said, I'm like, hmm, you know what? The only person that really could answer that is you, right? What's the most important thing to learn? And I thought to myself, you know, right? You know what you're good at. You know what you're not good at, but you want to get better at. Like, I would love to play the guitar. I'm not good at it, but I would love to, I would love to do that. Right. And um, so I, I had this little idea of this boy that was lost in a, you know, trying to figure out where he was going. And I thought, what better place than a swamp? And so I drew a picture of a boy in a swamp. And um, it comes in handy when you have, um, actually, do you know what? Seeing as I'm, So I thought, I'm like, all right, there's some, and I sketched in my journal at night and it was probably midnight. And I just, I drew this one image and I thought, I'm okay, I'm gonna do a, there's a boy and he's probably not too happy because he's in the middle of a, he's in a swamp and, and maybe he's kind of trying to wade through this slimy swamp and oh, he's probably knee deep in the water so we're going to make some ripples of the water and because it's a swamp we'll probably see some maybe some thorns right it's not a very nice place he's in sometimes you have to know where you don't want to be right to find out where you really want to be and when you find a place that you really want to be, take note of it, right? If you love being by the ocean, take note of that. Maybe you love being in, in a bookstore. Maybe you love being in a garage fixing a car. And then, so I had this image 
And then I thought, well, this boy is going to, I always like to think of when you're writing a story, it's like a piece of string and in the middle of the piece of string is a knot. And the knot is the problem the character is having. And I thought, well, the boy is going to be lost and then he will find his way out of the swamp. How will he do it? And I thought, hey, why not use the stars, right? The stars are like a map. And so I, I drew a star. And there, sometimes there are little stars, right? But then there are some brighter stars. And the North Star happens to be a, 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 a constant star. And it's bigger and brighter than some of the other stars. And navigators use that star to navigate. Uh, they can, they, if they lose their compass, they can still figure out where to go by studying the stars. So I thought that's a really good me metaphor for um, understanding what your interests are and how your stars can guide you on an amazing journey. So there we go. There's, so that was a, an illustrated answer. <laughs> That's awesome, work. and I think I think uh, the students need to learn that besides being an author, you're also an illustrator, an artist. You actually illustrate and draw your own books, but you also illustrate books for other authors as well. That's true. Mm -hmm. so, yes, I, I love collaborating. And I uh, with Judy, Judy. Blue. Oh yeah, know Judy Moody. Whoops. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right, and Susan Faraday, of course, Paul Reynolds, uh, illustrate the I Am series, I Am Yoga, I Am Human, I Am Love, and uh, yes, and Megan McDonald on the Stink series, and Judy Moody. So, yeah, I love, I love to draw and write, but I, I also like to take, uh, read your words and, and illustrate them. So who knows, maybe, Somebody out there mm -hmm. could write a story, and maybe I'll, maybe I can right. illustrate it. In fact, Susan Verde was one of Peter's students, and sure. Peter loved her poem so much. He said, "Susan, if anybody else illustrates this poem, I will be really jealous." Yeah. So I want to do it. So he ended up publishing with his student. So here's a good question on the screen: What inspired you to write that? By the way, our whole school had a day. Where we wore all wore dots because of your book, and that's with many of the yeah. students that are actually celebrate International Dot Day. And this is one of my dots uh, using animation ish. And so, uh, yeah, what did you find the dot? You kind of hinted that already. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say, uh, John, I love your dot. It was it's a very brave, beautiful dot, and um, uh, love the colors, nice and warm. And thank you for the question. Who was that from our last question? Oh, Juliana. Thank you, Juliana. Yeah, what inspired me to write the dot? Well, I was in a class, I, I do workshops and I was getting, I love to get people drawing and creating. And so I had this group of first graders and I said, draw whatever you want to just get warmed up. It could be a flower, it could be, um, it could be a donut. I don't really care what it is. Just draw something and we'll get warmed up. And so, I. I noticed this little girl and she had thrown her body on top of her artwork. She would not let me see what she had drawn. And, and I said, what's the matter? And she said, hmm, I just can't draw. And I thought, what? She's in first grade and she says she can't draw. I'm like, that's, that's, that's awful. I, I want her to, I want her to be braver. And I thought I am going to, I'm going to do something about this. Cause I thought if there's one girl that says, that they can't draw. Do you know what? There's probably a boy and there's probably another boy and another girl and probably, and as it turns out, a lot of grown-ups are terrified of drawing. And I thought that's going to be my mission to get people to be braver and to realize that, uh, mm -hmm. that drawing is like being in a sandbox, right? Create, right? Create bravely. <laughs> Do you need rules to be in a sandbox or to play on the beach? No. Right. It just comes from your heart and you're like, I know what to do. Right. I, with that pile of sand. I mean, some rules are good. Like oh you, yes, you don't want to throw sand in somebody's face. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. So some basic rules are good, but well, but you also need the freedom and also the courage to make your mark in any way that makes sense to you. And then I do wear this T-shirt that Peter made for me, "Create Bravely," and it's so important. As Peter said, sometimes adults are really scared too. Mm -hmm. They're scared to create. They're scared to make their mark. They're scared to write the poem or. Or yeah, learn an instrument or so here's a challenge for you, right? Find a nervous adult in mm -hmm. your life 
and say, uh, can you make me a drawing? And if they say, I can't draw, you could say, start with a dot. Right. And just, just get mark. one little mark, right? <laughs> one dot. And, and then, of course, get them to sign it. And then do, you could take it and you can put it in a little frame or you could put it on the fridge. And maybe that one little attempt could inspire them to get a little bit braver, a little bit braver. Right. So, and so, thank you to all of our friends of Palm Beach because I know that you have been very early, early um, um, participants in International Dot Day, and with your help, we're we're getting close to 17 million participants, teachers, librarians, right. students in, in 181 countries. Actually, it's 185 countries. Oops. <laughs> Some people. <laughs> That's a lot of countries. How many countries are there in the, the world? That's a good question. And a good right. social studies question is. Who does not celebrate International Dot Day, which is a day about original thinking and being original and, and having that freedom to create. Um, and uh, so there are 184, 585, 185, but I think there are like 250-ish countries in the world. Um, and so there are some places that don't celebrate it. And that's a very good question. Why would some countries not encourage you to have your own ideas. <laughs> so let's go back. Oh, here's a question right here. How long does it take for you to come up with characters? Oh, great question. Mm. Um, I love and, your inspiration uh, for you. That was awesome. I never heard that story. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, the um, some characters. Gosh. Um, well, there are two ways. One is um, like when I think of an idea for a story. I think of it like a, a movie or a play, right? If you write a movie, you have to find actors to, to be in your movie. So there are actors in my head. So I think to myself, all right, I want, uh, I want it to be a little girl and she's gonna have a teacher. So I'm like, okay, I have to draw a little girl and I'm gonna draw a teacher, this cool teacher with wild hair. And, um, uh, but then I also, I come up with characters just by doodling and I, make a promise to myself, I'll make at least one drawing every day. And if I'm really busy at the end of the evening, I'll just open up my drawing journal and I'm, I try to make, I try to make a little drawing and I have loads and loads of characters. And there's this one particular character, this dog, and he mm -hmm. keeps showing up and I feel like I know him. Uh, he doesn't have a name yet mm -hmm. and he doesn't have the story yet, but I know the character and, um, uh, Oh, Oh, there's a, sometimes Faber draws his characters, and sometimes he even sculpts his characters. Recognize right. this character? Where was this character? That's the, the North Star, right? Yeah, that's the cat from the North Star. The the North Star. Yeah. So, so good question. Characters, character development, and just choosing your characters are really, mm -hmm. really important. I actually have. I I just created a program called Get Published. And it's an online uh, a writing academy, so to speak. Um, and I share all my ideas. One of the one of the sections is characters. How to come up with a character. So, um, yeah, for the characters for the Sydney and Simon series, and they, they translated it to Sarah and Simone. I, I should probably know how to pronounce the name, right? Mm -hmm. um, the the characters in our Sydney and Simon series are twins. And we like being twins. So that's kind of fun when you are an author, you get to cast, mm -hmm. cast your characters any way you want. So, and it can be based on your life experience of people that you know. Mm -hmm. So good All right. questions. We're gonna go to a couple more video questions and we're gonna wrap things up a little bit. So awesome. uh, here's another question from a middle schooler. Hi, when I was watching the video for your book, I was really wondering how you came up with the idea for your book. Because personally, it was such an amazing book, super sweet. And I was maybe thinking if I were to write my own book one day, I think it'd be great to get a real opinion from a real author. Was it a little harder to hear, John? Can you maybe repeat it? Sure. Um, so she was asking where you got your inspiration for the North Star, uh, because like she's thinking about being an author, and she would love to hear where you get inspirations for lots of your stories. Mm -hmm, mm hmm Yeah. Well, another good question, Milana. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, for me, I think I, well, I'm just always thinking, 
right? And, you know, I get inspired by watching movies and certainly reading books. Um, but then I have my own ideas and I, these, I, these ideas spark in my head. And for me, it's like watching a little movie in my head. And then what I, the trick is to, to take little note cards and storyboard the, this movie that's playing in your head. And I think as a writer, think about your story as, as an animated film or a live action film. And think about your who that character is who will help tell that story. What's the environment like? Is it by the, is it a seaside town or is it on a, uh, a an art colony on Mars? Um, what, what would that look like? And use your imagination and just write down, right? Your imagination happens here. Nobody can see it, right? They haven't, uh, Apple computer, uh, uh, Bill Gates, they have not figured out how to film inside your head yet. They probably will, but mm -hmm. until they do, it's up to you to take those amazing ideas and write them down or draw them down or make animations or make a live action film. All good, right. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck on your writing journey. If you need any help, um, you know where to uh, find us, right? Fable Vision Boston. That's great advice. So the, here is Alyssa from Westport. Let's see what her question is. I'm in fourth grade and I go to Westport Elementary School. I've read many of your books and I really enjoyed them. I wanted to know what inspires you as an author. Wow. Um, thanks, Alyssa. Um, yeah, I love that. I keep hearing this word inspire, right? Inspire, right? Because in, in school, you know, we're busy and we're, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot of memorization. But in the end, you have to be inspired, right? You have to be, uh, you have to be excited and find joy in what you do. And I think for me, I just love, love, love. I, I love to write and I love to draw. Um, and the, that joy makes the journey a lot easier. So um, I think, you know, finding out what, and it, it, you know, if it's not drawing, it could be, it could be science or, or uh, medicine or um, uh, history, but think about what what inspires what inspires you. And by the way, thank you for the kind comments about my stories. I have a, a lot of them, and Paul Paul's having more and more. I keep reminding him, "Come on, Paul, you're mm -hmm. amazingly creative. <laughs> Do some writing." And um, so I encourage everybody out there: if you've got an idea, um, turn it into a story because stories are powerful. In fact. It might be one of the most powerful pieces of technology we we know mm -hmm. to store ideas and transfer and inspire. Right? When you read a good book, you get inspired and inspired to think a new way or to maybe do something, maybe climb a mountain. Right? I teach at the university level at Boston College, and I teach a digital storytelling class. And do you know what the the biggest challenge my students have is coming up with story ideas. Mm -hmm. And it's it's partly it's partly the create bravely thing that they're they're scared of they're scared of uh, diving in and thinking about what you know what what story would be meaningful to them what story do you want to write and I think this connects back to the North Star think about and I do this with my college students I help them map out their constellation of their interests so if you're interested in uh, traveling and cooking and writing those those could all be stars in your constellation if you if you can connect those stars oh and here's Pete right yeah you know, I started it but I haven't <laughs> so and this is what I like to do with uh, with uh, people is to I I make a little scene and then I say I say what's important to you right what inspires you so I'm just going to pretend that this person um, this person loves the ocean, all right? And, um, well, I suppose, suppose I love the ocean. Maybe this is my constellation. I'm a twin, so my, tw my twin star is pretty big because my brother is my, really one of my best friends. And then art. And then I have that mentor. Actually, uh, my mentor star is probably very big because <laughs> he kind of changed my life. Mr. Matson, mm -hmm. and uh, I met Tom Snyder, who is a teacher, right? Aldo Serino, maybe your your neighbor. 
who was an artist. Oh yeah, he who taught you yeah. a lot of things. Sky color, I think, mm -hmm. is de dedicated to Waldo, yeah. right? And then my children, right? Sarah and Henry. And actually, that's they're, they're probably a really big star, actually. Yeah. So this is what I like to do: is I create a map, and then I look at connections, right? Because a constellation is a is a collection of stars. So you, I think to myself, okay, I, I, my kid, I love kids, uh, I love art, my teaching. Oh, do you know what? Maybe I could teach children using my art, and maybe I could work with my twin brother. So I, I'm going to make a constellation here. Mm -hmm. And this is so. This is my this is my storytelling constellation. And by looking at your star map, right, which is going to change over time. Every time you re read a really good book, or you hear a good song, or you have a, uh, or you maybe it might be a course uh, that you really love, you add those stars to your constellation. And by looking at your star map, which is going to be very different than anybody else's star map, you're going to get clues to. Uh, where you have been, where you are now, where you're going, and then the most important question, right? This is the big North Star question. Where would you like to be going, right? Because where you're, where you would like to be going might be different than where you're going, right? Because if you're like, I, I want to be, I want to start a, I want to be on Mars. I want to start the first art colony on Mars. You have to actually do something to get there, right? So um, by knowing what we're, where your dreams are in the future, you can kind of steer your ship in a, mm -hmm. di a slightly different direction. So we wish everybody in who is listening, whether you're a student or a teacher or uh, a, maybe a parent, we wish all of you an amazing stellar North Star journey. It's a long journey ahead, but it's your journey, your very own wonderful journey. Well, Peter and Paul, we want to thank you. Uh, we want to show the constellation effort that uh, we want to share with the students, and then we're going to wrap things up, and we'll give you a final word to say goodbye. Um, this is a constellation mapper that we're going to put on our website, and boys and girls and uh, uh, students, you can actually create your own constellation, whether you're into um, music or you're into art or if you're a fixer or you're a mathematician or word problems. There are different ways of making your own constellation and we're gonna let you uh, kind of make up your own constellation. And so this will be on our website, which is edtechtraining.pondbeachschools.org and look for our virtual learning experiences page. And this will be under the section with Peter and Paul. And then um, John, do you wanna share them what the, um, the uh, other pieces? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys. And thanks, Peter and Paul. That was awesome. It's great to be able to see someone drawing live and and being so inspiring as well. Um, I'm definitely not someone who's a good drawer, so um, I appreciate it. Yeah, right? Um, I'm, I'm the stick figure person. That's about all I can do, but I, I appreciate it. Stick figures are good, like too. That. Yep, exactly. Um, so for our students, <clears throat> excuse me, students and teachers in the chat box, um, we do want to hear from you as well. And hopefully this code is right. I messed up last video, but um, this video is for you to share back. So what we want you to do is share your thoughts with us through Flipgrid. So you can go to the bit.ly, which will be in the chat box. You can take a screenshot of the, uh, of the QR code, however you want to get to the bit.ly. That will take you to the Flipgrid for Peter and Paul Reynolds. Make sure you're under that one. And you can give us a 30-second selfie video. And what we're going to do is after we go through them, we're then going to share them with as a mixtape to Peter and Paul so they can see your ideas and your thoughts. Maybe you want to share them um, ideas that you have for books or things that you've drawn. Maybe you can hold up drawings to your to – your, um, to your camera on your phone and share the drawing with them. Whatever you want to awesome, share artistic yeah. with them, um, you know, we would love to see the work that you've done, your artwork, your your thoughts, um, and and what inspires you. So, please feel free to do that um, anytime, and we'll go through them. Again, teachers, just so you know, we've gotten over 500 of them in two weeks uh, over all these streams, so we are getting through them. Uh, it's just taking time. So if you are using them for grades or something, please let us know, and we'll try to get through yours a little quicker. 
Um, also, teachers, there are still more resources on the website. Uh, it'll give you a link for this video and the Flipgrid response. And if you have any other uh, sections that you're interested in to any other videos that we're doing, tomorrow's our last day of streaming, which I'll get to in one second. But on June 9th and 10th for teachers only, um, we are having a remote digital learning institute with some amazing speakers across the country who are in uh, a lot of the tech companies. Um, I believe Peter and Paul are also going to be coming back uh, to do a keynote for that for teachers. Um, so please keep that in mind. We would love to see you on June 9th and 10th. But tomorrow, what you guys are looking for, we have four streams tomorrow. First up at 9 a.m., we're going to have a pediatrician who is a doctor who works with children um, and, and handles a lot of uh, major surgeries for students. He's going to share what his life is like. After that, we have someone. His name is Alex Alexander Yarosh. Yarosh, sorry about that. Hard name. Um, and uh, he is the head of talent at the Gersh Agency. So he's uh, he... He's the one that finds awesome people for all the TV shows that you watch on TV. So he's going to talk about what he does and what his career is like. At 12.30, Jenny Majera is going to be here, and she's going to talk about her career. She actually is working at Google right now. Um, so she's going to talk about her role at Google. Um, I believe she's the head of education outreach or something like that. Yeah, the global head of education impact at Google. Um, so that's going to be really cool. And then at 12.30, we're going to end all of our streams with a beauty and fashion panel. Uh, we have a group of people from stylists to makeup artists to creative directors who are going to share what it's like working in the makeup industry and the beauty industry. Um, so we have a lot of great careers tomorrow. We have four careers for our last day. Um, and that's kind of the whole point of this, this uh, series is to expose you to careers and places that you may have never thought of before and, uh, and learn about them. So with that, uh, again, I want to thank Peter and Paul for joining us. We do appreciate you guys a lot. And I'll let you guys end with the last word. Well, thank you, John. John, all the, all the students and teachers out there, we loved your questions and loved having this time to share together. And we're excited that to, to share this story. A lot of attention gets put on some of the books like The Dot, but I, I think it's the North Star book is the most important book that, that Peter wrote and illustrated. And I, lo I love the fact that you're sharing the Constellation Mapper. It would be really cool to hear students talk about their Constellation Maps. When, I, when my students are graduating from Boston College, sometimes they get really scared because they're graduating they're, and they come to me and they say, I have no idea what I want to do. And do you know what I do with them? I sit down with them with that map and I actually have them fill it out. And then we talk about how can we connect as many of those stars together to help you lead a really wonderful, purposeful, meaningful journey and it, and it, and it works. So, so yeah. thank you. So. Yeah, and uh, if you want to hang out with us uh, again, all you have to do is find a book with our names on uh, and open it up, start reading, and we will be there with you, no matter what age you are. And remember that picture books are for all ages, so don't stop reading them when you get, you know, fifth grade, sixth grade. Keep going, because there are some pretty powerful ideas in, in great picture books. And, you know, even when you're an adult, uh, and you're working really hard on your job, you know, pick up a pick up a picture book, your favorite picture book or a brand new picture book and let it inspire you on your journey. Take care, everybody. And thank yeah. you for letting us connect the dots. Yes. Awesome. And one last thing for me, as you guys were sharing about space, don't forget at about 430 this afternoon, we are finally going to go back to space for the first time. We are launching one of the rockets right from here in Florida. That so, is so um, awesome. My, yeah, we can watch it go. Went on this, I uh, went to the International Space Station. No kidding. Yeah, Commander Chris Hadfield, uh, he he called me up before he went up on his rocket, and he said, "I'd love to work with you sometime. We should get together." And I said, "Yeah, let's get together." He said, "I'll be busy for six months." I'm like, "Where are you going?" He's like, "The International Space Station." So I joked. I said, "Can I come with you?" And he said, "Well." Maybe, sort of. He's a, how about if you send send a book to my wife who's packing my kit in Houston, 
And he said, I can't promise, but, um, you know, I'll try. Well, he tried, and the I have a photograph of the book floating in the cupola of the International Space Station. That is so, so cool. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Awesome. Yeah, well, thanks and, again, guys. John, oh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead, or Peter. Oh, I was just going to say, that's why it's so important, right, to say something. I wrote a book called Say Something. It's so, when you've got an idea in your head, right, say something because there are people around who can actually make your dreams come true. We do not know how to help you if you do not tell us what your dream is. So like I kind of joke saying, I'd like to go to outer space with you, but I, I re actually would love to go into space. Uh, I would love to write a book in space. I'm sure it would be incredibly inspirational. By saying it, right, Commander Hadfield actually then responded saying, hey, maybe, there, maybe there's a way to sort of kind of get you there. So in a way, my book went to space, so I kind of went to space too. And that is by saying something. So I encourage everybody to say what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're dreaming, because there are amazing people on this planet that want to help you make your dreams come true. Awesome. Thanks again, guys. We appreciate you. John, anything you want to share before we go? Just one more thing is like, um, you know, students, as you're going away for the summer, just take a book and read it and map your course for the summer and for beyond because you never know what it's going to take you. And the North Star is a great book for kind of like figuring your path. And thank you for joining us today.